Story one. My husband of 16 years is having a baby, and it's not mine. I, 46 female, have lived with my husband, 48 male, for over 20 years, married for 16, and we have two kids, 16 and 9. One year ago, he decided that he has had enough of family life and went to live with his parents for some time. He was behaving like a bachelor for the entirety of his stay with them, found a girlfriend, and was drunk constantly. He had used alcohol before, but we had never much had much problem around it. He also spent a lot of his time playing games with friends on his computer. One year ago, he informed me that he found a girlfriend and was ready to move out of our apartment and cut ties, although he didn't quite do that. He left me, making close to minimum wage, to care for our two kids and also left a collection of unpaid bills going back months. After that, I fell into a depressive episode that lasted two months and my two close friends managed to get me out of it. About three months after he left us, he came back. Well, not really. He started coming to our city, hanging out with the kids again and also with me, inviting me out for drinks and dinner. All was going well and my 16-year-old went on a week-long trip with him. For a while, all was going well. He said that the girlfriend was a lie and he just needed some time away to clear his head. Last night, I sent him a goodnight love you text as I usually do, but in the morning he replied with, I don't deserve your love. I'm about to become a dad again. I'm sorry. I later called him to ask what he meant by that and he told me that he has a girlfriend in another country who is pregnant with his kid. She plans to keep it and he wants to cut ties with me and our kids to care for that child. I don't know what to do. I requested divorce, but he's declined, saying he was not ready. Can anyone give me advice regarding this situation? Can I divorce him anyway, even though he doesn't want to do it? Is there any way I can secure payments to my kids, since with only my job I can barely make ends meet for the basics? I do some odd jobs here and there, but it is not enough. <sighs> A, this guy is an idiot. Like, the fact that he's like, I can't do it. I can't be a parent. I gotta be on my own. And then he's like, I don't want to be with you with those kids. I'm gonna try again with this new kid that I accidentally made. Like, you're not gonna do better with that kid. They're probably gonna be worse. It sounds like you are regressing, dear sir. Uh, second, to this person, um, there absolutely has to be stuff that you can do. And also, you know, the way that you get finances and stuff is with child support. You get child support from this person. Don't go easy. Don't, when he's just like, I can't afford that. Oh, it's too tough. Like, no, you, you get what you deserve and everything. This person is trying to abandon you. So, holy crap, please don't let him get away with this. I hope he doesn't get away with this, but sometimes the courts and all the way this works sucks. So, who knows? Story two. Am I the a-hole for kicking my brother and his family out after he tried to give me a W avention? I'm having a hard time feeling remorseful and I'm unwilling to apologize for calling my brother out and for asking him to vacate my property. I've given him many chances to stop this behavior and my brother won't stop shaming me for having been a stripper before I got my prestigious job. These are his literal words, I'm a nurse anesthetist. He's been making offhand remarks about me having been a stripper since he found out six years ago. He gets on these long tirades about how I am ungodly, unholy, and that the sins I committed can never be forgiven unless I repent and lest let Christ into my heart. I am not religious, I'm certainly not a Christian, and will never be one, but my brother refuses to accept this. Also, I only started stripping because his drug and gambling addiction ruined mine and our parents' lives. He remortgaged their house, took out loans and several credit cards in our parents' name, and even sold our parents' identity to his former dealer. I didn't know how bad the situation was until I came home one day from university and found strangers in our living in our house. My father was too embarrassed to let me know they were living out of their car. They also never reported my brother to the police because my parents didn't want him back in prison. Last time he went in for two years, me and my parents were blackmailed to pay his prison debt. So when I found out my parents, baby sister, and baby brother were living out of their car, I decided to work as a stripper. I made good money, and with that money, I was able to house my family, pay off my parents' debt, my brother's debt, and put my younger siblings through college and university. During that time, I also paid for his rehab, and he got his crap together. Now he's happily married, employed, sober, and with a child on the way. FYI, I paid for his wife's in vitro fertilization treatments. Last Sunday, our parents invited some people over for a big catered dinner. My brother and his wife thought this would be the perfect time to turn it into what he called a W-avention, and embarrassed me in front of all the guests. 
I completely lost it. I was so enraged that I spent most of the evening cursing him and my sister-in-law out. I reminded him that I would never have been a stripper if he hadn't tried to ruin us. On Monday, I drew up an eviction notice and sent it to him. I want to cut all ties with him and his family. I am truly done with him. Almost everyone is telling me I'm right in being angry, but that it's terrible to kick in him and his wife out when they are due to have their first child in nine weeks. My parents are begging me to forgive him, and honestly, I feel like I have I have been and am being reasonable. I've given them 90 days. I'm done being called the W of Babylon and the downfall of mankind. Apologies for the length, but I thought I needed you all to know as much as possible, and I feel like I'm losing my mind. I had to repost this because the moderators locked it down for breaking the rules. I have edited it and reposted it for judgment. Thank you. Edit. To clarify, I stripped for five years and used the money from that to claw myself and my family out of debt and pay for my brother's rehab. I haven't stripped in over a decade. I paid for my sister-in-law's and bought the house my brother and his wife live in with my nerth Aneth money. Which is why he doesn't feel bad about asking me for help now because this money wasn't made from sinning. Also, my sister-in-law is just as bad as he is. <sighs> All right. No shade against Christians. I have a number of Christian friends who are very, very devout. I love them. I think they're wonderful people, and they're very nice about celebrating their religion. However, I have noticed that there is a certain type of Christian out there. Typically, it is someone who's done some truly reprehensible stuff in their life. And part of them getting cleaned up was finding religion, and it helped set them on the right track. And that I am all down for. Like, hey, if it helps you get your life on track or whatever, that's fine. However, a thing that I've noticed, and maybe this is just me, but some of these folks who find religion after living a bad life for a while, suddenly like start trying to really forcefully push this religion on others. And I think it comes from this idea that it's like, no, everyone has to accept this religion as the absolute truth, because if they don't, then I'm not actually forgiven for all of the crap I did, because a lot of these folks don't actually try to make real amends. A church goes, hey, did you ask Jesus for forgiveness? Then you're guilt-free. And they go, I'm so sorry. And they, it's like they don't have to make any reparations for all of the crap that they did. And I don't like that mindset, because a, a, I know plenty of religious people, Christian or other religions, who don't just restrict themselves to that. They actually also just try and be good people. But forcing your religion on other people in any way is gross. And doing it to the extent that this person is doing it is just something that I've seen happen before in my life. And it makes me so mad. And so I'm 100% on the poster's side. Kick him out. If he's going to be like that, if he's going to be ungrateful, and if he's going to cast stones like he is, then he can get the hell out of the glass house you've provided. That metaphor got all messed up. Story three. Am I the a-hole for walking out of an event when my fiancé introduced me as a bookkeeper? I, 45 female, have a fiancé, 55 male, who is a retired military officer. I own a successful company I started seven years ago and have a small staff of 25. I worked my way through college, paying as I went. Therefore, I graduated in my early 30s with a double major in accounting and business management. I am very proud of that. For a little background, I worked hard for my degrees and have zero debt. I know it took me longer than the typical student going full-time to college after high school. I worked full-time to pay as I took classes. I went to junior college first, then finished at four years. I took two classes per semester for a long time. But I finally made it. I have been teased by that junior college isn't the same as going to four years at a major university. Well, I am proud to have done both and feel the education I received at junior college was excellent. I worked as an accountant for some large corporations as well as programming and IT. I started my company doing similar support to large and small companies alike. I have a wonderful staff. I manage the contracts, kickoff meetings, sales, and consulting staff. I also do some of the consulting and most of the sales slash contracts. My sister is my office manager, and I am blessed in so many ways to have her. I was dating my now fiancé before I started my company, and we recently got engaged. Everything seemed to be perfect, except he kept introducing me as a bookkeeper. No disrespect intended to them or the profession. My issue is that I've worked hard to get where I am. 
I am an accountant, graduate with a double major, and a successful business owner. He could pick almost any other title to introduce me as, but he chooses bookkeeper. I have asked him many, many, many times in private to stop calling me a bookkeeper as it implies to my clients and business associates that he doesn't respect me or what I've accomplished. He said he doesn't see the big deal or the difference and continues to do so. I recently pulled him aside and asked him to just introduce me as a consultant at the event we're going to. While there, we were talking to a prospective client for my company, and he said, she's come a long way for a bookkeeper. I know my face had a full blush at that, excused myself, and walked away. We had both driven there, so I got in my car and went home. We both went to our own townhomes. I sent him a text to let him know I was leaving and would talk to him later. He thinks I'm overreacting. My family thinks he's a controlling but that doesn't respect me or women. I'm not sure what to think now. He seems so supportive when we are together, but not when we're around other people. He tends to treat me like a subordinate, nice kid playing with the adults. He does talk down to me in front of my family, but I always assumed he was joking badly. So am I the a-hole for leaving and overreacting? First off, folks, important little thing to know about relationships. Don't judge someone based on how they treat you in private. Judge them based on how they treat you around other people. Because that's them. That's them, you know, putting on the show for other people, but also just kind of being themselves. I think that's extremely important because just because they're nice to you when there's no one looking doesn't make them a good person. Kind of like this guy. Who's a real piece of crap? I'm sorry, I don't care what he thinks about what she does, she has asked him time and again to not refer to her as a bookkeeper, and he keeps doing it. The fact that this whole post didn't start with my ex-fiance is mind-boggling to me because this guy can suck eggs. Story 4 my boyfriend is going to propose, but I do not feel loved anymore and am questioning the relationship. My boyfriend and I have been together for a very long time. We dated from the time we were 16 to 22. We then broke up for a while, but got back together when we were 25. We're both 20 now 20. We are both 29 now. We live together, and I know he's going to ask me to marry him soon, so I want to get my feelings in order before anything happens. I love him, I really do, but I feel sort of unloved. I know once couples become comfortable with each other and live together, the spark or whatever dies, but I don't like feeling like this. I still make an effort. I ask him how his day went. I'm affectionate. I put out, so to speak. The thing that really bothers me is that when I say something, a lot of the time, he ignores me. When I bring it up, he says that he didn't hear me or that he was busy. For example, I'll say, did you see there's going to be a strike tomorrow? And I won't get a reply. I'll wait 10 seconds, still no reply, then I'll ask, Hello, did you hear what I said? And he'll go, hmm, or grunt in response. He does this often, just abrupt responses after ignoring me and me having to repeat myself. I'd understand if he did this if I was talking his ear off, but I'm not even a talkative person. Yet when he talks about anything, I pay attention, respond properly, validate his opinions, and reassure him when he needs me to. Affection-wise, I always give him hugs and kisses. He hardly ever does this anymore without me asking. I compliment him and tell him that he looks handsome. He hasn't complimented me in any shape or form in probably over a year now that I think about it. I still look the same looks-wise. I haven't gained weight or anything. Not that that's a reason to stop loving someone, but you know how some people are. So I don't know what has changed. Have things just become stale? Is this what inevitably happens? This whole situation has been troubling me for a while, but I'm not sure what to do. Our anniversary is in two months' time, and his sister accidentally let it slip that he's going to propose. If it weren't for that, I think that we'd have been together for too long, and now he's sick of me. I've tried talking to a few of my friends who are already married, and all I got were varied versions of, that's how men are. He wasn't like this before. He would pay attention to me, talk to me, and overall, I just felt more like, you know? Now it just kind of feels one-sided. The one time I attempted to bring it up, I opened with, do you still like me? Because sometimes it doesn't really feel like it. And he replied with, if I didn't like you, why would I be here? I could tell it was going to end up in an argument, so I just let it go after that. How do I handle this situation? I want to bring it up with him, but I don't know how to do it. I guess I'm not really good at articulating how I feel. Or should I not say anything because this is just the way relationships go? Please advise me because I'm a little lost. Men are not just like that. Plenty of men 
are not just like that. Nobody is just like that. That's not like, yeah, some people are like that. And maybe they don't realize it, but it's not healthy. When a, one partner wants to, like, communicate and have affection and the other is just ignoring them and dismissing them when they try to bring it up, that's not good, healthy communication. I don't necessarily think that this whole relationship has to suddenly be like, done, over, you know? Like, I mean, my initial reaction is, yes, leave this person. He's not, he's not giving you the respect and love that you deserve, but this could be repaired. Maybe you can suggest, like, trying to talk more openly and be completely open with your feelings, even if it's going to be an argument, because you might find out through that argument that, hey, this isn't going to work. Or maybe couples therapy or something. Seriously, he might just have some issues that are preventing him from expressing how he is. He might be going through something. I don't know. There are a number of reasons there. However, if you do try to open communication and he still refuses, then I would say, boy oh boy, if he pops that question, say no or just run. <laughs> Story 5. I just found out my 23 male deadbeat dad took a mortgage out on my name when I was 14 years old. What do I do now? When I was 13, my parents filed for bankruptcy and divorced. I quickly moved out of my dad's place and in with my mom because my dad was super abusive and really loved making me suffer. My dad cut contact with me and all my relatives immediately after I moved out and that was the last time I spoke to him. Fast forward to 2018. I was filing my taxes and saw that it asked me about a mortgage that I'd taken out. I assumed it was just a security question, so I didn't think much about it. The following years, each time I followed, filed my taxes, it would ask me, long, short story, I went to the Social Security's office, and they told me that there was in fact a mortgage in my name, but they couldn't give me any of the details about it, just that it exists, and it was taken out while I was only 14 years old. Where do I go from here? How did a real estate company even let a 14-year-old sign for a mortgage, and how did they not realize whoever signed for me wasn't actually me? I'm flat broke, barely eating once a day. Someone broke into my car and totaled it by ripping out my ignition, so I lost my job due to lack of transportation. Sorry for ranting, it just feels like my life is already over. Well, uh, I think that you should try to talk to a lawyer, someone that is willing to speak with you uh, without payment at first, and who hopefully will only take payment if the case is won. And my god, does this seem like a case that should very easily be won, so easily, like, how how you could lose this case is beyond my thinking. Could it maybe happen? Sure, sometimes these things are stupid, but hopefully not. And hopefully, if this case happens, this is the kind of thing that you can maybe sue for, because this seems like a pretty big deal. And that's all I gotta say about that. Sue your dad, everybody. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.